Boys, UFC Vegas 97, Burns versus Brady just finished up. It is what it is. The boy Burns, I don't know, I think it's going to make a lot of sense, the matchmaking I'm going to do for these guys, because I'm not going to lie, Burns looked hella old out there. He looked hella gun shy. I don't know what happened with him. 36 years old. It's not looking too good for the future of Gilbert Burns. He did take his gloves off during Sean Brady's interview. I honestly thought he was going to retire. It doesn't seem like he has. But as you guys can see, we have every single winner and Gilbert Burns on the screen. We're going to match make them with their next opponent, who I think they should be and why. We don't just got that main card. We're going to run through early prelims as well really quickly. But to start it off, the main event. Right now, I'm not going to lie, the welterweight division is in all kinds of shit. It seems like every division is pretty garbage right now, matchmaking wise. Welterweight specifically. I don't know what it is about these welterweights not wanting to fight. But they fight maybe once a year, and it's terrible. So this is what we're going to do. Right off bat, welterweight, the champion, Blah Muhammad, he's going to fight against Shavkat Rachmanov. Then we have Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards, Jack Della Maddalena. Kamara Usman, I got no idea what the hell to do with Kamara Usman. I'm not going to lie. Then we have Sean Brady. Sean Brady, Jess B. Gilbert Burns, called out Ian Gary. We'll do Ian Gary next. Do I think it gets past someone like an Ian Gary? Honestly, there was points in time where Gilbert Burns was rocking and wobbling Sean Brady. And if Gilbert can do that too, I think Ian Gary can knock him out. Yeah, let's run this one early-ish next year, 2025. Then we got Gilbert Burns. Unfortunately, he just looks so freaking old, so slow. Looked hella gun shy. I don't know what happened to the boy Gilbert, but from that time of him being injured to now, he, he just doesn't look the same. I think we have a retirement match for Gilbert Burns and this next guy who also goes very well with the welterweight division right now in the list I was making. Gilbert Burns, Colby Covington, loser goes home, winner winner faces Kamaru Usman. Let's do that. That seems like a good idea to me. And yeah, both of these guys look terrible in their last few fights. Both of them hella old, too old to be in this welterweight division. Time has 100% caught up to both of these guys. And unfortunately, you know, loser goes home, winner gets a redemption shot, probably will lose their next fight probably will retire after that let's go down natalia silva got that pretty dominating i think it was a 30 27 and even a 30 26 scorecard in that fight against jessica and pretty much predicted that shit to the t the one thing that we did find out about this fight is natalia silva has a chin on her because jessica and was landing a few shots here and there of those looping hooks that caught her perfectly on the chin but didn't rock her at all stayed with it 100 this girl got a chin on her I think we gave her a title elimination bout against the loser of an upcoming fight in this flyweight division. That's going to be the loser of the Aaron Blanchfield versus Thug Rose fight. I think it's going to be Aaron Blanchfield. So Natalia Silva, Aaron Blanchfield. Let's run that one sometime maybe around April-ish. March, April, somewhere around there. Then Steve Garcia got that TKO over Kyle Nelson. You guys have to let me know in the comments. Does Kyle Nelson, do you guys not low-key see a little bit of Sean Strickland and Kyle Nelson? I don't know, it's like the face proportions. He kind of just looks like a Canadian bearded version of Sean Strickland. I don't know what it is, but you guys have to look it up. Tell me in the comments below, am I tripping or not? But Steve Garcia, TKO the first four minutes of the fight. Kyle Nelson was supposed to be fighting Calvin Cater. I think Cater got injured or something. So this shit was on semi short notice. Not as short notice as a Cody Durden fight, but semi short notice. Let's just do Steve Garcia, Calvin Cater. We'll just rebook Calvin Cater. I think this would be a fun matchup. Steve Garcia on a five fight KO streak. Deserves someone in the top 15. Calvin Cater on a decent losing streak. He needs to defend his spot in the top 15. I think this would be a great matchup. Super, super fun matchup. Someone, in my opinion, is definitely getting put to sleep in this one. Yeah, let's keep moving down. Cody Durden got it done. Retired Matt Schnell. It is what it is. Matt Schnell was looking really good out there, but one thing i have to question is it's either matt schnell just randomly got a super like titanium level chin or cody Dern just has no power in his hands because he was catching matt schnell over and over and over clean on the chin and didn't even rock him so don't know if this boy has zero power or what it is but cody Dern just snapped the two fight losing streak Let's match him up with someone similar in the rankings. I believe someone also coming off their first win in the UFC. That's going to be Azat Maxim. I think that's how you say his name. Who really cares? Fun matchup. Fresh matchup as well. Both of them not looking the greatest in the UFC. Cody Durden, not going to lie, did look really good in this fight. But 
as of recently, not including this Matt Chanel fight, hasn't been looking that great. Like I said, he was on a two-fight losing streak. Let's finish up this main card with the opener. Yeah, Ashmo is getting it done over Trevor Peak. I don't really want to talk about it. RIP the boy Trevor Peak. It is what it is. Let's match up Yanel with Tom Nolan. Good fun matchup. Yanel doing pretty good in the UFC. I'm pretty sure he's 2 and 1 in the UFC. He deserves a little bump up in competition. That's going to be someone against Tom Nolan. Now let's quickly run through these prelims. We're not going to go super in depth because I do know you guys aren't the biggest fans of the prelims. I don't really care that much, but let's run through them really fast. Chris Padilla got that second round TKO over Zhu Rong. He's 2-0 in the UFC. He called out Mahasete. I think that's how you say his name. Let's give him Mahasete next. Moving down. Dolgarian got it done in a very dominant way. Second round submission over Brendan. Let's match him up with Wilson Wilson next. Not the hardest test for Dolgarian at all. Good test to see how he is, though. I think he'll run through someone like a Wilson Wilson. Then we can keep building him up, but let's go down. Andre Lima, the dude that got bit in his last fight, got that decision win over Felipe Dos Santos. I'm not going to lie. I thought Felipe Dos Santos was going to win, but pretty much exactly what I said in my prediction video happened just in reverse. Andre Lima putting on the pressure, do pretty much just dominating Dos Santos that entire fight. Let's match him up with Jimmy Flick. I still think this would be a semi-competitive fight, but Jimmy Flick on the older side. Andre Lima should be able to get this one done. Then moving down to Gabriel Santos. Another decision win for Gabriel Santos. Let's match him up with Nerd and Becky. I think this would be a fun matchup. Both of them haven't fought each other yet. Moving down, Jacqueline Amorim. Honestly, I'm not even mad at the fact that she was balls deep into Vanessa Demopoulos' gloves. Because like I said in my prediction video, I said, mark my words, put this shit down on the house. That karma is coming for Vanessa Demopoulos. That girl has won countless robbery decisions. So karma came back. She lost first round submission. Jacqueline, let's match her up with Carolina Coley Whiskus. I think that's how you say her name. I don't fucking know. Regardless, I think Jacqueline run through is Carolina. Let's go down the last two people. Andre Petrosky got it done. Honestly, Dylan Budka, like I said, just a worse version of Andre Petrosky and it just showed in that fight. I think we give Petrosky Edmund Shabazian. If Edmund Shabazian can't beat someone like an Andre Petrosky, cut him. But it should be a pretty easy win for Edmund Shabazian. And yeah, fun matchup. Also a fresh matchup for both these guys. Let's finish it off. Nathan Fletcher got it done. He is now in the UFC. Let's give him Steven Gwenin. I think that's how you say his last name. I don't really know. But yeah, that's UFC Vegas. Vegas 97. Let me know in the comments below what did you guys think of this card. Honestly, lots of lots of fun moments. Next week we got the Sphere card. I'm probably gonna have my predictions video out by Monday. But yeah, guys. With that being said, there's really not that much else left to say except for I will see you guys in my next video.